Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can use a combination of knowledge graphs and AI to write a book so that you can represent the main ideas inside as a network, where you can see the main concepts inside the book, how they relate to one another, which topics they form, and more importantly, what are the gaps in the discourse, because it's when you address those gaps that you can generate new and interesting ideas. So keep watching if you want to learn how it works. We'll be using a tool that's called Infernodus, and I'll be using my own book as an example. I'm working on something at the moment. The book is called Waves into Patterns, and it's going to be published by Publishing House in Berlin. And I need to generate some final ideas for the book and just kind of estimate whether the content inside is relevant or not and uh, what other topics I could focus on. So in order to represent the book as a knowledge graph, I go into Infernodus apps analyze the text and then upload the file and then I choose the actual content of the book. It's the PDF file, click visualize, save it as a new graph and the text inside the book will be visualized as a text network where the words are the nodes and the co-occurrences are the connections between them. Then they will be aligned on the graph where the most connected words are spread apart and the words that connect to them are clustered around them. So that enables us to see really clearly what are the main ideas inside and what topical clusters they form. We also have names for those clusters that are generated using AI here. So for example, I can see that this book is on exploration strategy, planetary influence, dynamic patterns, ecological equilibrium, and so on. So there are plenty of different topics here. And already at this point, I find it's very useful because uh, if I need to get back into writing, it gives me a really good general idea of what the book is about and what are the main topics inside and what I could focus on maybe, right? So for example, in this case, I see explore, exploration strategy is one and ecological equilibrium is another. So I know that, okay, it's talking about a way of exploring the world, but also finding some kind of ecological equilibrium in that exploration. I also like to notice these small topics like here, natural variability. So for instance, here it reminds me that I'm talking about how seasons change each other and how this kind of interchangeable nature of things is very much prevalent in a lot of different natural phenomena, but you could also apply it elsewhere. But I see it's kind of underrepresented, so that can indicate that this could be a really good point of the book to develop further, to kind of uh, dig a little bit deeper on this particular topic. Another way that this graph can be useful is uh, that when I click on the blind spots here in Infernodus, it will visualize uh, the blind spots between the topics identified in the book. So, for example, there is one on ecological equilibrium and dynamical patterns. Those two clusters are connected, but not so well, so they could be better connected. Then I have another one that's even further apart limitless exploration, so something about growth and saturation and periods of growth and saturation and ecological equilibrium, which reminds me that actually I should connect those ideas much better because if I talk about uh, these processes of natural growth and how growth is then followed by decline, uh, I should actually link it better to ecology. So I'm going to also take notice of this idea. By the way, when I come up with ideas like this, I can write them here into project notes. I will write something about limitless exploration, natural growth cycles, and ecological equilibrium. So this is one notice for me. And then this first one on natural cycles, seasons, and how that can be observed elsewhere. So I'm going to save it as notes and later I'm going to be using those notes to jump back into my writing process. So this first part is just for activating some ideas and finding gaps and smaller uh, topics that I want to develop further. And then if I click uh, show another gap here, for instance, I see here a cluster on cosmic cycles. Uh, let's see what it's about. If I click on zoom in, I will see that it's about waves and tensions of release. And I think I connect it to something that also happens on a cosmological level. And then another one, again, on uh, these processes of growth and decline. 
So for example, here again, I see that I have these two topics which are kind of related because wave is like a growth and decline, but um, maybe I'm not talking about them in the same context. This is why they're separated and maybe it could be interesting to think of a connection between them. By the way, it doesn't have to be text. Uh, it's a book of texts and images. So maybe I should make an image that connects both. I will actually write it down as an idea, make an image that would connect cosmic cycles and uh, growth cycles. And I will also write waves. And here's where AI is quite useful because uh, it identifies the names for those topics. So it makes it much faster for me to understand what those clusters are about. But there is another really powerful way to use the AI in this workflow is to actually have Infranodus generate an idea for me. And the way I like to approach it is that um, I don't just go directly for an idea, I actually ask it to generate an, an, an interesting insight question. So if I click here, AI insight question, it's gonna focus on this gap and then it's gonna come up with an idea that could link those two clusters together in, in an interesting way. So for example, here it says, how does the release of tension and, and opportunity in high tension moments, wave, origin, catalyze growth, or uh, precipitative crisis, defining new stages or periods of environmental saturation and recession. So that's interesting. It's going to be sometimes really hard to connect those ideas together, but because AI is kind of forced to come up with a connection, it's always going to try to link the ideas for you. And by asking this question to yourself, you can actually come up with a really interesting thought that you can use to develop your ideas further. For instance, here, I'm going to be thinking about how a periods of decline lead to new opportunities because uh, they create uh, a space for something new to evolve, right? So I'm going to actually save this into notes. It's a really good idea. And I'm going to add it into the book in one shape or another. Um, maybe even ask this question inside the book. This is also really interesting. We don't always have to provide the answers. And then I'm going to ask it to generate some more ideas and see if it comes up with anything else. For example, how does the release of tension and opportunity during crisis periods redefine growth stages, leading to a new origin of environmental uniformity and saturation? So again, this idea of tension release and how it creates new opportunities, but phrased in a slightly different way. Let's save it into the graph and move on. I can also change uh, which clusters it's actually analyzing if I just click on next advice here and then it's just going to reiterate through the different clusters and generate these ideas for me. So for example, now you see there is one on fractal synchronization and cosmic cycles. So if I try to make a connection between these two, here I'm going to show it a little bit better in the graph. How does the synchronization of circadian rhythms influenced by repetitive actions and attention to breathing within a confined space impact the emergence of creative opportunities and the release of tension reflecting Roger fractal patterns? So that's very interesting because it reminds me to talk more about a uh, physical practice that I'm talking about in the book and how it relates to those natural cycles. So I'm going to write, talk more about the physical practice and how it relates to natural cycles. So again, Another idea, which is bridging this uh, structural gap or, or a blind spot identified in the book. And that kind of prompts me to think about it in an interesting way. And as I generate more and more questions like this, at some point, I might also want to use the AI to answer those questions. For example, here, if I click uh, inside question and I generate a new question that links the topic of ecological equilibrium and dynamical patterns, um, here it's asking how does the variability in natural circadian rhythms interact with fractal patterns in life processes, potentially leading to points of synchronization or breaking with, with within complex systems. So that's an interesting question. If I want, I can actually ask the AI to answer it by itself. So I click on elaborate here and I'm going to try to ask it to derive the answer from this context. So it relates a little bit better to the book. And then I'm going to click on GPT-4 chat. So it uses GPT-4 model to answer this question. And let's see what it comes up with. I'm going to take a little moment here. Maybe it's a very complicated question for it. And here it says natural circadian rhythms, variability and fractal patterns in life processes showcase a dynamic equilibrium. They indicate how organisms sync with or diverge from their environments, embodying periods of growth or receding to maintain system complexity. It's actually interesting because I didn't think of it 
as a, a moments of connecting or disconnecting from your environment or from the system that you find yourself a part of. So I could perhaps add this actually. And then it says this interaction facilitates new cycles of synchronization or disruption, mirroring the inherent adaptability within complex systems. I can actually maybe even remove this part and then I can save this one into notes. So there I'm going to take this note and move it here and then later use this project notes to elaborate this discourse to start writing. So you can basically go through this process uh, infinitely. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is that when you look at the graph what you can also do is to select a few ideas and to get rid of them to hide them temporarily so you can see what's hiding underneath and that's a very useful process because if I know the book I know that I'm talking about the states of variability for instance I'm gonna hide it and see what's hiding underneath and then uh, emerging multiple centers this I also know already what it's about by the way if I click here I can see in which parts of the book uh, these terms are used but I'm gonna hide them and see what else is hiding there waves big term okay I can actually click this button and it hides uh, the most connected words automatically until I find something I like. So for example here, attention. I want to remind myself what I've been talking about when I was writing about attention. Construct attention. In order to begin with, zoom in and construct. Attention is given to something new, so there is a natural period of decline because it is about to be born again. So how I can talk about this natural dynamics of attention and maybe related to the cycles of growth and decline, how we give attention to something, allowing it to develop, and how we remove the attention so that we can give space for new things to emerge, right? So that can also be very interesting, and I can save it into the graph and write something about attention and natural cycles as a note to myself. Okay. Another sort of secret feature that's really well hidden and maybe it's a little bit esoteric also it's only available if you click on the advanced mode here is if you go into the structure of the graph so I'm gonna actually return all those nodes back and if I go to the structure of the graph I can see here how the narrative evolved over time and the way that this graph works is that it shows um, how the most influential concepts evolved throughout the narrative evolution so, for example, here I can see that right from the beginning I had a sort of rhythmical evocation of all those ideas, but somehow, like uh, midway through, uh, they also disappeared. And maybe I focused on something slightly specific and went on a tangent, and it kind of departed from the main idea of the book. And then I came back to it, because I've been talking about the most influential concepts again, and then again, smaller ideas here. So. I have these two moments inside the book where I'm talking about something very specific, which is a good feedback to me, and it makes me think that maybe towards the end I could do the same. So here I have also less influential ideas shown, and maybe I can focus on that a little bit more and make the book more interesting by alternating between influential ideas and also smaller ideas that are perhaps not so well represented. In order to understand it better visually, we actually have a functionality here that allows you to highlight the statements in the graph and see how it evolved over time. So if I click activate here and I'm going to scroll, I will see how the discourse evolved. And you will see that I'm talking about pattern, scale, but then at some point here, there are smaller ideas coming in. So I'm talking about constructing, finding, zooming in, zooming out, growth, then again pattern and scale comes back which is like a recurrent theme in the book maybe, pattern, scale, again, focusing on something smaller about multiple centers. So there I'm going zooming into, again, into um, a more specific topic, then coming back to scale and pattern, and then going more into practice and how uh, there are different practices, life practices or art practices that can be used to um, explore different life scenarios. So there again I can maybe use it as a reminder to go into the subject of physical practice which is also very interesting to me so I'm gonna remind this to myself physical practice and how practice is an important way to uh, create new patterns. 
and save this ID into the graph. So also this allows me to see how the discourse evolves and whether I'm always talking about the main ideas like I did in this case, scale and pattern, or whether I sometimes focus on some um, smaller ones and more specific ones like I did here towards the end. So this is also a very interesting way to analyze your discourse. In fact, there is a measure here of semantic variability, again, available if you click on the advanced mode, and it shows you how the discourse evolves over time, and it uses the internal recommendation system of Infernodus based on the network structure, on the knowledge graph structure, that encourages you to connect ideas when they are too dispersed, and that encourages you to disperse your ideas when they're too connected. So for example, here, I find myself in the optimal uh, state at the moment. Here it says topical diversity, optimal. And if you click on the uh, question mark, it's going to explain you why it's optimal. But basically, it means that I have several topics inside this discourse, which are distinct enough, but they're still connected on the global level. So it's an optimal structure because it allows for different topics to emerge, but they still connect on the global level, so they somehow make sense. But then the next step that the system proposes me is f going into the direction of exploration. So you see when we move on this axis, it's to explore, uh, not to focus, but to explore, and then to also zoom out, right? So you see it also indicates here what happens. We had a very interconnected graph, and then we're kind of zooming out, so we're looking at the bigger picture, and we're exploring what else exists out there. And that's how it encourages you to develop your discourse further. So, for example, if I'm at the optimal stage at the moment, it means uh, I mentioned enough topics and uh, I found uh, some connections between them. If I want to develop this text further, maybe I should jump onto a smaller topic, uh, go into some idea which is maybe less prominent in the graph, right? So I'm going to try to think of the periphery, like where can I jump on the periphery of this graph in order to develop some of those topics which I haven't really talked about enough, right? I can also click here, generate AI suggestions, and it's going to focus on those smaller topics for me and come up with some interesting idea. For instance, here, investing time across seasons bridges the repetitive cycle of life with strategic development, optimizing actions in both physical and conceptual spaces to define enduring growth. It kind of sounds technical and poetic, exactly the type of writing that I want to create. So I'm going to save it into notes and maybe even use this exact sentence to, uh, you know, augment the content of my book with something that develops uh, these, these peripheral concepts a little bit further. So this is how you would use this structural insight, kind of following the arrow, which recommends you to jump into parts of the discourse which are less connected, if they're interconnected, or if you're too biased on one topic, it's going to recommend you to go into uh, a more dispersed mode. Then to dispersed, it's going to try to help you also connect ideas together. So it's kind of like this ecological thinking in work, actually, and here it's explained how it works. It always tries to find an optimal structure by encouraging more connections when they're needed or encouraging you to disconnect things when you're too focused on one thing. Okay, one last thing, a uh, secret feature I want to show, which I find also very useful, is in the blind spots here, you have conceptual gateways. So these are the entry points into the, this discourse. I always like to make an analogy with the uh, social networks here. So if words are the people that like to hang out together, and this is how they're represented in the graph, then uh, some words will know not so many people, so they don't hang out with too many people, but the people they know are very important. And this is exactly what those nodes are. And uh, that is usually a very good way to understand how you can jump into a discourse, bypassing the main ones like pattern and scale in this case, because uh, they are too saturated with content. So we're finding something that's less saturated, like, for example, the word moon, you know, moon cycles, very interesting. Then investment and summer, like this seasonal cycles, moon cycles, and also how we can combine it with investment strategies. So maybe that can be a really interesting poetic detour that I could make in the book. Moon cycles, seasonal cycles, investment strategies, kind of going more in this direction. Variability states, this I already have quite a lot. 
and also this emergence of multiple centers. This can be a really good entrance point to kind of develop the peripheral discourse a little bit more, but still connecting it to the main ideas that are found here. So this is how you would use this conceptual gateways in the blind spots here. This is it for the overview. Please let me know if you have any questions. Also try it out with your own book on infranodos.com. And uh, please let me know about your experiences in the comments to this video. Also please subscribe so you get informed when the new videos are out. Thank you.